What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to episode five of Narc Talk with your host, Mr. Lee Hammock, aka Mental Illness, the self-aware narcissist from TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. You know, my platform is for like bringing awareness to mental health disorders and to, you know, get more people into therapy and validate the victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse and things of that nature. This series is about answering questions from subscribers on YouTube. So question number one, I answer five questions. Question number one, is there ever an end game with the narcissist? We have kids together and he was the one who cheated. I found out and left him alone. Now he's torturing me and won't leave me alone. The, the end game for a narcissist is to never, is, there is no end game for them. They always want to be a part of your life some way, shape, or form. And even though you have kids together, he wants it to be more than that. He wants it to be, I guess he wants it to go back into the relationship. It seems like he wants the relationship to continue on in its new form like you just kind of have to adapt to him and hit what he wants and what he needs and whatever because if you forgive him for cheating on you he's going to keep cheating on you because he's going he's going to think that you are okay with it so you kind of got to play with a double-edged sword right there like do you want to go back into the cheating relationship because you have kids together or do you want to have the shot at happiness and peace and tranquility and all the other good stuff because if you go back into this relationship and like cut like I feel like even though if you, even though you are married, you don't have to talk to him all the time. Like you literally don't have to talk to him. Like especially if you're separated and he not living together, keep it about the kids. Like hey, look, can you not? Do, can you only text me about the kids? Because that will min minimize the gaslighting and the arguments. Like only text me about the kids or call me about the kids. If if he if he's talking to you and you talking to him, and he starts talking about something that is not kid related, hang up on him. Set a boundary. Stand, stand up for yourself. Because his his goal is to beat you down to the point where you were like where you when you get to the point where you like well I'd rather just be with him and just deal with the just rather be with him and not have to be a part and deal with the argument anyway so at least at least I'm with him question number two simple question can you one day invite your wife as a guest yes my wife is actually going to be doing a live Q and A here this weekend. Either Saturday or Sunday. We're trying to plan it out. So like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. If you're just seeing this on your page, like and subscribe. My wife, of course, is the, the wife of a diagnosed narcissist. We've been together for since 2011. The end of 2011, we've been married for six years. <laughs> Don't tell her that. Don't show her this either. We've been married for six years. Um, I've been diagnosed for four. She's left me like two or three times. This last time, <clears throat> she's been here for a whole year. We've been making it work, so she's going to do a Q&A by herself. I'm not going to be involved in it. We'll maybe plan a Q&A with us together, but I'd like to let her do it by herself so she, so she feels comfortable to say what she wants to say and not be pressured to say and stuff because I'm sitting beside her and things like that. I hope that makes sense. Question number three, does a narcissist like being alone or do they always have to be with people? Me, I like my alone time for the most part. I like being alone situationally i like to be alone to kind of decompress from people to get away from human beings I, you know i consider myself not a human i'm a mutant like i'm, I'm like an x-man so i like to get like, kind of get away from people in that aspect but most of the time, like alone like relationship wise i don't like being alone that like intimately like i need to have i need to be in a relationship like or not necessarily a relationship but have somebody i'm talking to or dating or whatever somebody close by not just for you know for the grown-up stuff, the, the no pants dance, but just for other stuff, just to be around and talk to and things like that. I don't like, you know, necessarily being alone and things like that. <clears throat> Question number four, do narcissists actually miss people they have dated in the past? Or is it more out of sight, out of mind? I miss people all the time. But there is a, a there's a little uh, caveat with that because I miss people because of what they did, what they could do for me. And I think a lot of narcissists or in the same situation where they miss people, but it's like they miss the people's the people's presence and how they can make that person feel and how that person made them feel about themselves. Like sometimes a narcissist, like you get into a situation with a narcissist where they just beating you down constantly, where they're like lying to you, cheating on you, manipulating you, gaslighting you, doing all the narcissistic stuff where, you know, when you like you become like what they call what they call the grade eight supply. Like you are the perfect person for the narcissist. Like you don't ask too many questions. You pretty much like Maybe I think doormat would be is too aggressive of a word, but I mean it can be pretty accurate. Like you just let the narcissist do whatever they want to do, and you don't ask too many questions because you either used to it or you just don't care. You check, you mentally, physically, emotionally checked out of a relationship 
but y'all have kids and y'all married and whatever. Um, but yeah, that type of person, the narcissist will miss. I miss people. I miss certain people. I don't miss everybody. Not like I say. So it's kind of, kind of hit or miss with that question because I don't miss everybody. I'll be honest with you. I don't miss everybody. There's some people I just like cool, peace. I'll never see you again. Dunzo. Some people you do. Like, some people you do miss. Not just relationship wise, like fr friendship wise and things like that. Family wise and things of that nature. So yeah, I would say I do miss people, but it might not be. On the level of missing them intimately, like I missed the way you made me feel, and we just used to caress each other. Nah, no, not at, <laughs> not to that level right there. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I'm trying to find one more question, y'all. Scroll with me, because like I said, I think I, I like doing this, but like, do y'all like me doing this? I don't. It just feels unnatural to me. So I might th think of a different type of segment to do, because this is kind of like kid and miss. You know what I mean? Question number. Five final question: How do you get? How do you safely get a narcissist to completely discard you? What do they find repulsive or, or unforgivable? Um, you moving on and doing better, well, it's unforgivable to them because how dare you replace a narcissist? How dare you do better without me? How dare you glow up without me? How dare you? How dare you start going to the gym and stuff without me? How dare you start going back to school without me? How dare you find somebody that treats you and loves you and respects you better than I did? How dare you find somebody that, you know, clapped the cheeks better than I did, which is, you don't have no trouble doing that. I'm just joking. Um, but how dare you? So yeah, the way you get somebody to completely discard you and cut off all access to you, because that's the only way that they would fully discard you is when they think that they, they when they think that they either have you replaced for good or they feel like they can't get you back point blank period. Like you've moved on, got married, had kids or whatever, and you gray rock them or you no contact them. That's the only way they can fully discard you on that end of, on that end of things because they have to, they, they there has to be no hope. Because, you know, hope gives narcissists like it just gives narcissists fuel. Like I can get it. Like if you talk to them, if you break no contact, they get hope, they will never fully discard you. If y'all have been going back and forth on and off for five, ten years, They'll probably never discard you. Ten years of on and off, y'all break up for a year, come back together, break up for another year, come back together, break up for three years, come back together. They probably will never discard you because they just feel like they can just come and go as they please with that. And that's <coughs> that's a good situation for most narcissists in any situation. But y'all, thank y'all for tuning in. Five questions. Let me know if you made it this far. I know it's not the most exciting episode or whatnot, but like, if you made it this far, I really, truly appreciate you. Um, let me know if y'all want me to keep doing this. If y'all want me to switch it up and do something different. I might can do two episodes of the Narcissist Code or go live every day or something like that. Just let me know. Anyway, thank y'all for tuning in. Like, subscribe. Peace.